In 1992, the National Institutes of Health did a panel review of different types of interventions for weight loss, including behavioral. After completing weight loss programs, 90 to 95% of people regained most of it within, within one year and all of it within five years was their conclusion. But here's what we've learned recently. Um, in 2007, Tracy Mann did a meta-analysis of weight loss studies, and she found that weight, weight reaches its lowest point around six months of a diet you know, when somebody's dieting and starts increasing at about one year um, after which weight regains speeds up over time. So we see, you know, the weight is lost, it starts to go up at a year, and then it starts to go way up. Many studies with follow-up end at a year, so they're ca not even capturing all of the diet regain. One-third to two-thirds of dieters end up higher than their pre-diet weight. So when I work with people, when, when you work with people, you hear stories of, of people who um, when, are much heavier than when they started dieting. And I can't tell you how many clients I have who have looked back in pictures and say, I was fine if only I hadn't started. And we'll talk more a little bit later about why weights go up after dieting. Um, in 2015, Allison um, Fields did a study and found of 278,000 people and found that within five years, the probability of regaining all their lost weight is between 95 to 98%. So, you know, we have maybe two to 5% of people who go on a diet, lose weight and keep it off. Um, they're the, well, I guess if there's unicorn, they're the unicorns, there's only one of them, but they're the exception um, that two to 5%. And I think in general, if somebody's gonna lose the weight, they, they die at once, they've gained it for some reason, they died, and they lose it. When you get people who are caught in that yo-yo chronic dieting, um, it's, they're not going to be part of that few percent. Um, they're the ones who are going to keep regaining that weight back. Tracy Mann says a small percentage of dieters, something like 5%, can do it. And they do do it but they do it by devoting every minute of their entire life to staying at that weight. Basically, they spend their entire life living like a starving person, fighting biology and evolution. Dietitian Beth Rosen writes, chronic dieting actually increases your weight over time. We all have a set point, that place where our natural weight falls and where our bodies experience homeostasis. When we restrict our food in an attempt to lose weight, our bodies don't appreciate it and work to get back to homeostasis. To do this, our bodies produce a hormone that makes us obsess over food and signal hunger in an effort to combat our weight loss tactics. Once we give in to our body's fight, our bodies tend to gain the weight we lost plus a little extra. That extra weight is an insurance policy in the event weight the in the event of a subsequent diet, that this vicious cycle of dieting causes our body to increase our set point. Thus, the more we diet, the more we weigh over time. And keep in mind um, that the reason the body does that for protection has to do with um, the fact that our ancestors lived in times of feast and famine. So this is from the, our Making Peace with Food card deck. Your body can't tell the difference between a diet and a famine. That's because the human body is wired for survival. When it doesn't receive enough nourishment, it hangs on to much needed energy, um, energy, stores fat for the next perceived famine, and sends out signals to eat more. It's just doing its job. So in, in this card, we have people reflect on what happens when you undereat during the day. And just, we, you know, we've all had days where for some reason, but, you know, maybe it's because of dieting or maybe it's because something just, you know, interfered with being able to feed yourself. How does it impact your mood, your ability to concentrate, your energy level, and the amount you eat later in the day? I'll probably mention this later, but when I work with clients, particularly those with binge eating disorder or those who t a lot of times people will say, I do great all day. It's at night. You know, all of a sudden at night, I can't control myself. Well, it's because they're under eating during the day. And their body is just, it's screaming, I need nourishment. And so just helping clients increase um, what they feed themselves during the day often decreases some of that eating and, you know, eating past fullness in the, at night. Now, again, some of that can be emotional. And we'll talk a lot more about that later today. Um, but sometimes we therapists and our clients assume it must be emotional when it's really just about not getting enough nourishment. 
Remind yourself the bodies of all sizes need adequate nourishment throughout the day.